Hello, everybody. Yeah. Mr. Bruce Boyer, welcome to the Armory Television Show, if you can call it that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mark. It's wonderful to be with you. Yeah, I'm so happy we managed to get an opportunity to sit down and chat, because we've known each other for a while now, huh? It's been, a, it's been a while. You and I haven't seen each other for a while, and we yeah. certainly haven't had a time for a chat. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you're running all over the world. That doesn't help, yeah. Not. <laughs> Living out of airports. And, uh, well, I've been writing a book. You've been so writing a book. I think I, it's this book, right? I have. Please and, tell us about this book. And you just happened to have it with you. I just ha it, it magically appeared good. on the sofa. Well, I think, you know, uh, every writer probably says this uh, as though they weren't interested in actually selling the thing for money. <laughs> but this really has, for me, been a, a kind of poem from the heart. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, um, these musicians that I've been writing about um, have given me such a great deal of joy in my life, and uh, at times a great deal of consolation, and maybe even a little wisdom, that um, I thought that this was maybe just a small way that I could repay them. And also, um, because a lot of it is the music of my youth and young adulthood, um, I really think that these are such great musicians. I don't, I don't want the music to be forgotten. So I hope um, that even young people will, you know, pick this up and, uh, and play some of the music. There's a Spotify list at the back, you know, and, uh, and enjoy the music. It, 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 it's really great, great stuff. And um, it's a little, in a way, a couple of people who have uh, seen the book have said, you know, um, we thought you were just going to keep doing books about clothing, <laughs> you know, <laughs> which uh, I, I still do have a couple of books about clothing I'd like to do. But um, this book, it's really not far out of my purview anyway, because it's really about style. These musicians... Uh, had a great deal of style, and uh, that enters into the scheme of things too. Mm -hmm. You know, can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah. Um, well, there's a the, one of the articles in there is about Sinatra, uh, as though there hasn't already been enough, or maybe even too much said about Frank Sinatra. But um, I thought I could find something a little different to say about him. And um, what interested me uh, is that if you look at his music, um, e even from the beginning uh, and uh, then um, to his later maturity, um, the way he presented a song, um, he made incredibly wonderful and fine choices, not only in the music he did, but in the way he presented it, his style there. I mean, sometime he would hang back on the beat. Sometime he would rush the beat. Sometime he would let the beat go by. And in every instance, it's, it, it, it's the funniest thing that in every instance when he makes these choices, you think they're the right choices. Mm. So um, that he kind of owns the song and um, I know, I've often f f found myself, you know, you're singing in the shower and so forth, and you, and you, 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 you sing a song that Sinatra sang, and um, you realize that you're singing it his way. You know, you're copying him, that he just, his choices so imprint themselves as the right choices. And that happened in his clothing, too. Mm -hmm. Over the years, he, he changed his clothing style, and it was always the right choice for the times, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I don't, we don't have to go into uh, that in detail, but uh, it, it was the matter of choices. And um, in a way, you know, the more you think about it, that's what style's all about. Exactly. You yeah. know, make, making choices. You have, um, 
more choices today in a way than ever. You know, the internet's opened up everything. Mm -hmm. And um, you can, you go shopping anywhere in the world, really, you know. Yeah. So it, it, in a way, it becomes more difficult because you have all these, these choices. But there, um, I guess I would define a guy who had great sky, uh, style is a guy who, you know, consistently made the right choices. For, for him, and, and then, you know, we learn from that, I think. Well, and also you said something that I thought was really interesting, where you, um, someone who is so in control of their style can make a choice, and even if in theory it's wrong, you still recognize it and you appreciate it, and you think it's right, in its own way, in its own context. Yes, well, some, um, some people, um, if, if you listen to, to, to singers, for example, um, Tony Bennett just died. Mm -hmm. um, I always thought Tony Bennett made incredibly interesting choices in, in his presentations. Sometimes I didn't think they were right. Sometimes they were absolutely perfect. But yeah, he always made interesting choices. Um, a, a woman like uh, Nina Simone, mm -hmm. fabulous choices in how she presented the material. And again, to me, like Sinatra, I think she just imprinted her style on the material that she did. But that, that's what style is. You know, you say, wow, that guy is style. It, it's he imprints his choices on you and, and gives you something to think about, mm. you know? You know, a lot of these songs are, have been around for a while now. What do you think of the successive iterations of these songs, you know, because a lot of other people have sang them and made their own imprints on them as well. Oh, there, yeah, there, there are uh, songs in here that, um, when, you, when you mention that, I think of uh, Al Hibbler's uh, song, uh, Unchained Melody, mm -hmm. and everybody has copied that song, and I, I think it's obviously partly the song. I mean, it's a great song. Uh, but I think that uh, Hibbler, who did the original version of it, I think his uh, presentation of, of, of that song just struck everybody, other musicians, that, you know, that they, that they would say, wow, that really is a great song. You know, I'm gonna, I wonder if I can do something with that. Mm. You know, maybe do it in, in, in a little different way, um, make it a little more contemporary. Uh, so you don't but, hold the, the original as sacred? Everyone no, has their, oh no. Everyone has their opportunity to make something great. Oh, ab absolutely. That's right. um, you know, I, it, it's a funny thing, I'm kind of imprisoned in the tastes of my youth, mm. you know, the, 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 the first ones that I've, uh, versions of the, of the things I've, I've, I've heard I tend to like the best, but that's merely nostalgia mm. and sentimentality. I also realize that some people have taken that material and done much better with it mm. than the originals. So, yeah, I, I don't think there's anything sacred sacred about it. It's, um, it's, it's a question of what you bring to it. It's like clothing. Yeah. You know, I mean, we all uh, know what a blue button down is, <laughs> but it's what do you bring to it? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what, what do you wear with it and how do you wear it that, that makes the difference? Yeah, I, I think uh, it, it, it's always a matter of taking the traditional and impressing your own personality on it. Mm -hmm. That's what style is uh, in, in the individual way. It's, it's you, take, you take the whatever is out there and you bend it to your own personality. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. I mean, that's... You know, uh, speaking of the tastes of your youth, right, let's talk about generational changes then mm. in terms of style. You know, like obviously at the Armory, we love this sort of clothing. Mm. Um, and in a way, things have come full circle, but they haven't, right? Like we're wearing things that are similar 
to what they were, say, 40 years ago, mm. but different as well. What do you think of mm -hmm. that? Well, uh, yeah, I, I, I think that people say, um, you know, things run in 10 or 20 year cycles and uh, <laughs> the, old, the old saying is, you know, well, you, you hold on to that, that'll come back in style. You know, uh, uh, the reality is it never does. Mm. It never does. We, we continue to move on. I think um, it, it's, it's always a very good thing. I mean, this is just my feeling, but I think it's a very good thing to give a, a very strong nod to tradition, mm. you know, um, and to take that what's what's in the heritage, mm -hmm. and to bend it and mold it and see how it works for you in in the contemporary sure. terms, sure. you know. Um, for example, a, 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 a lot of guys are not wearing neckwear a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. um, I happen to love ties, you know. Uh, I'm not wearing one today, but I, I love ties. But the thing is, if, if you're not going to wear a tie, then you kind of do have to rethink what you're going to do yes. with the jacket, with the suit, with the shirt, yeah. you know. Yeah. And... Um, I think there's the opportunity to kind of impress your own personality on it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so that, that's how I see things moving forward. You know, the, 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 the things do, do, do change and we're almost constantly presented with new situations. I mean, this is not clothing, this is everything, this is life, you know? Yeah. We're presented with new situations and you, you, you have to, 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 to look at your toolbox, you know, and say, well, what, you know, what, what tools can I use to make the adjustments that I have to um, in, in the contemporary situation? Yeah, absolutely. Let's change tack for a second, though. Yeah. Because actually, I realized we didn't really do a proper intro. Or, I apologize, it was very unprofessional here. Who, who is this guy off the street? Yeah, actually, what is this book? Um, can, you, can you give us a little potted history of yourself? Mm. Well, I, I started off, I, I had wanted to be a teacher, and um, I taught in uh, two colleges for a total of uh, seven years. And uh, then I, um, I kind of realized something. It was funny, it took me seven years to figure out that I really wasn't a very good scholar. Uh, teaching on the, on the university level calls for two things. You have to be a good teacher on the one hand and you have to be a scholar on the other hand. You know, it's like sin and confession, you know. It's, uh, and I think modesty, no virtue. I think I was a, a good teacher, but I wasn't a very good scholar, and it took me seven years to figure that out. So I, I knew that my future was not going to be in, in higher education as a teacher. So I started to write, and um, I was very lucky that Town & Country had a new editor at the time who was looking for new writers and picked up on what I was doing and uh, gave me steady work. And uh, it kind of just kind of just went on from there, and um, and then uh, after about uh, I don't know five five years or a little more there, I I started to, to, I did a book and then I did another book and and um, that's the really the short the short business uh, riffs is uh, my ninth book. And um, in November, I have a, another book coming out, actually. Oh, yeah. um, it's, a, it's a new edition of the book that I did on Gary Cooper oh. with, with uh, Gary Cooper's daughter. Um, the first edition of that uh, uh, book sold out, mm -hmm. and the uh, publisher wanted to do a, a reprint. And um, Maria, 
uh, my partner and I said, well, it really should be a new, yeah. should be new, you know, not just a reprint. So she wrote a new introduction and um, found some new wonderful photos, and I wrote two new chapters. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. One on uh, Gary Cooper's homes and one on Gary Cooper as an actor. Mm. And uh, uh, so it really, is a new, it really is a new book. So that, that'll be out in, uh, in November, and that'll make 10 books, and maybe that's a good point to quit. No. You know, the, just a nice round figure, 10 books. I don't know. Well, I suppose, maybe. Huh? <laughs> Something to think about. I mean, what would you do after, otherwise? What would I do otherwise? Yeah. Oh, I, I'd, I'd sit on the back porch and drink beer and have a stroke, probably. <laughs> Okay. I don't know. I, I don't know what I would do. Can you talk a little bit about True Style? That was a great book. That was one of my favorite books Thank that you. you ever wrote. Thank I you. Love that Thank book. you, Mark. Yeah. yeah. What gave you the idea for that? For True Style? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I, um, the thing is, I have, it, it's the third volume of, of my essays, really. Mm. Um, I, I've made books, in a, in a way I've cheated, I've made books the easy way. I've collected essays that I've done and put them together, you know. So, um, first there was Elegance, and then there was Eminently Suitable, and then the third one was True Style, because uh, after um, Eminently Suitable, I continued to do articles for various magazines and so forth, and I had accumulated so many of them that um, actually a pub, the publisher came after me. Uh, he, he called me and, and said, you know, we, we, you should put the, these, uh, what they used to call fugitive pieces, uh, together in a, in a third volume of your essay. So we, we, we did that. See? We did that, and uh, yeah, I, I, I was happy to do it. Yeah. I was happy to do it. I mean, True Style was interesting because it was a book about men's clothing, yet it wasn't visual. Um, and as a result, it probably ended up being more relevant and more long-lasting. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you a story about that. When the book came out, um, I got a review. I can't, I can't remember exactly where it was or who the reviewer was. Uh, but he said, um, this is not a particularly good fashion book because there are no pictures, you know, no illustrations, no photos. No. So it, he, he dismissed it. I was thinking of writing him and saying, I didn't do this, but I was thinking of writing him and saying, there really are pictures there. They're between the lines. And as soon as you learn how to read, you'll be able to see the pictures, you know? But yeah, um, other guys do the picture books. Alan Flusser does great picture books, sure. you know? And uh, I, I just, well, I don't know. I guess I'm, I'm a writer, yeah. you know, I'm a writer. I, I, uh, I, I see things in, 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 in terms of words and I hear the language, mm. uh, so I'm not, um, I'm not as visual as some of these fashion people, yeah. I guess. I think as a way to get men thinking about their clothing at a new level, you know, it was perfect. It was well, I, I do try to, I, you know, um, my thing was always, and I, uh, uh, again, you know, modesty, no virtue, I think I was the first to do this, that, um, before I started to write about menswear, menswear was just captions. Mm. You know, if you look at old Esquires and GQs and everything, there, there's not a lot of discussion. They're captions. And I always thought that um, some people, people in the fashion industry, like you and I, we take clothes maybe a little too seriously. You know, uh, clothing, uh, I, I always think it, it's, it, it's not really a cure for cancer yeah. or anything like that. <laughs> On the other hand, an awful lot of people don't take clothing seriously enough. Mm -hmm. You know, you really do want to make a good impression and so forth, and you should pay attention to it. And people who say, uh, 
I don't really care what I wear. Well, those people get what they deserve, <laughs> you know. Uh, so it, it does matter. It's a fine line. Yeah. You know, clothing is, is, is important, but it's not that important. So you have to walk the fine line. And I, I think I was the first who, who tried to find that line, you know, whether I did or not. Uh, but I tried to find that line. And I tried to show that clothing was not an isolated concern, but it was a part of the greater zeitgeist. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to see clothing in terms of history or economics or aesthetics, mm. or psychology, mm -hmm. or sociology, something like that. And that's because of my academic background, you know, that I, I, I tried to put the subject, uh, I tried to embed it into the zeitgeist, you know, and, and say that uh, this was a part of your life. And it is, you know, uh, guys have all sorts of interests, you know, mm -hmm. uh, antique cars, whatever, you know, what music, whatever. Um, so clothing is not their whole lives, you know, uh, like we think it is, right? <laughs> uh, it's a part of their lives, and it should be seen that way as a part of their lives. So. I totally agree with that. I think also, the, one of the nice things about seeing a lot of writing about clothing is it sort of opens up this door to allow you to indulge your vanity in a more reasonable way, too. You know, it's not quite as unbridled. You're not just like snapping up every single thing in the world. You, you start to think about it in a little bit more of a, this is my identity, this is how I relate to the greater world sort of context, you know. And, and, and in a more discreet way, yeah. rather than a blatant way. Yeah. 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 Um, well, it's, it's the difference between uh, some of the people you see at Pitti Womo and then others you see in Pitiomo who uh, are wearing um, what I think of as costume rather than clothing, mm. you know? Yeah. Um, and that, that, that idea of cus costume it cuts a lot of ways. You know, some guys are, are into the clothing of, of a particular period, you know? Mm -hmm. the, 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 uh, the rock and rollers of the 50s or the, the Esquire of the 30s, you know, or uh, uh, whatever. Uh, to me, that always strikes me as, uh, as costume more than clothing. I, I've always thought the best thing was to simply look the best you can in the world that you're in, mm -hmm. you know. Um, looking backwards or forwards or sideways or whatever is fun, but I think for most guys, you, you, you simply want to look the best you can in the situation you're in. For, for, for example, I mean, uh, I, I've never thought um, that if I were to dress guys and um, show them what I thought they should wear, it would never be uh, costume kind of stuff. I would say to the guy, "Well, you know, you're a you're a very good accountant. You ought to look like a very good accountant totally when you agree. go out into the world." I totally agree. You know, yeah. Um, a, and that's what it should be about. I'm not. I wouldn't try to create a dandy or yeah. you know anything like that. Yeah. I, I would just want the guy to look the best he can in his world. Yeah. Right. Very good. And I, I know you feel that way. I oh, mean, I absolutely feel that way. I totally know. agree with that. <laughs> so, um, Bruce, any closing words on riffs? Well, uh, other than buy it, I buy was multiple gonna say, copies. <laughs> Christmas is coming up. It, 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 it makes a wonderful gift, <laughs> birthdays, <laughs> holidays. Um, but no, I, well, what I hope is that people who buy it and read it will then go and play the music. There is yes. a Spotify list at the back, yeah. so you can go to the music very easily. And that's the main thing. The main thing is the music. So I, I, I hope that people will go and play the music. I think that they'll find a lot of wonderful surprises in the music. I really do. Excellent. So. 
Bruce, thank you so much for your time. Mark, it was such a pleasure. My pleasure, indeed. All right, Mark. That's it for now. Thank Thanks for watching. Fabulous. Thank you, Bruce. That was wonderful. <laughs>